I'm visiting Snaber and Sons in Holland. They've just celebrated 100 years in business and they've been given the royal warrant by the Dutch royal family. The business is a very clever amalgam between traditional blacksmithing and modern engineering. And the tools they produce have got this wonderful heft that only comes from a hand-finished product. And it really is extraordinary, the difference between one of these spades and the sort of spade that one gets mass-produced anywhere. The excitement for me is that together with Yap, I've been able to develop my own range of tools. And these really have been born from the practical dimensions rather than necessarily from the artistic dimensions. I first met Yap some time ago when we were discussing the rose fork. And a conventional rose fork has got two prongs, it's a heavy thing, and it was designed about a hundred years ago to work between the bedding raises. It's actually very heavy to use, and after about 20 minutes your wrist really falls to bits. So I thought, well, perhaps if we produced something with three prongs and use the central prong a little bit taller to act as a lever, then that might be an easier tool to use. And to break the soil up, without too much effort. Since I'm here in Holland, it seems like a good scheme that I should be using a Dutch hoe. Dutch hoes work very simply by pushing and pulling the weeds and by walking backwards so that you don't tread them back in again. And the sun will pretty soon shrivel those weeds up and there's really very little need except for the bigger ones to take them off. Part of the design problem with the Dutch hoe is that when the ground gets quite hard and compact, you really need to be able to get into it. And for that reason, I decided that it would be more exciting to have these points on the end of the hoe. And that then enables you to get in far easier than it would do if it was just a flat blade. And equally so on the reverse. When one's pulling backwards, I wanted to have more of a profile instead of just a flat bar so that the weeds that might have otherwise been pushed over would then be dislodged. And the fun of this was that to coincide with Schneeber's Royal Warrant, we decided to call it the Royal Dutch Hoe. And additionally, we incorporated the traditional wooden handle on the end so that instead of a nasty knob which would leave a blister in your hand one had a tool that would work very well and uh, Jaap Schneeber took it to Chelsea Flower Show and I'm pleased to say that it managed to get the product runner-up award. I designed this little tool so that it would be easy to work in the border um, around other plants and using the hooks on the side easy to get out the offending and there we are out it comes nice and easy I've got to dig this rose up it's in the wrong place and every time you use a spade like this especially when there are roots around the place it's in the style of very hard work. So I came up with a spade for this sort of use and indeed for digging in the vegetable garden or wherever which makes your life easy. I got the idea of this hoe from watching a James Bond film, you know, Jaws. <laughs> and the idea here really, like the Royal Dutch hoe, is it goes in the ground very easily, cuts through roots and makes your life generally a little less difficult. By cutting away these profiles here, it also makes the spade lighter to use in the soil. It's no way a hybrid between a fork and a spade, it is a spade. And as you can see, it really allows you to get underneath the roots, and so it really does enable you to bring the rays out of the ground without too much trouble. doesn't necessarily make digging easy, 
makes digging a little bit easier. And the other thing about the profile of the spade is that when you get stones in the ground, you can actually work around them very much easier with these serrated edges.